Professor Suresh Subramani uh, is one of the eminent biotechnologies in, in this world and he is uh, the Vice Chancellor of uh, University of California, San Diego. He is with us. Hello, sir. <laughs> sir, could you please elaborate on your research areas in biotechnology? So, uh, the, you asked about the work that we are doing. Uh, we are interested in human diseases uh, and we study this in unicellular organisms uh, such as yeast. But because the genes and the processes are similar or conserved through evolution all the way from yeast to humans, we can study the mechanisms in, in yeast and then apply that to human systems. So we study in all, uh, all of our cells, in all eukaryotic cells, there are specialized compartments that do particular functions. So there are mitochondria will generate energy, nucleus will have all of the genetic material and, and be sure it is replicated properly and divide, goes to daughter cells. And similarly, there are other compartments and we work with a subcellular compartment called the paroxysome. And we are trying to study what is called homeostasis of this compartment. That is, how is this compartment regulated in real life in response to the environment, the food we eat, and so on. And just to give you an example of why this is important, if you go out and exercise, your body cells will have more mitochondria because you need to generate more energy. But if you are not doing any exercise, your cells will have fewer mitochondria. So that means then that these cellular compartments have to be induced in response to the environment or, or the new They have to be destroyed. And it is the balance between the synthesis that is called homeostasis. And this problem is a general problem in cell biology that is not understood for any subcellular compartment. So we study how peroxisomes are assembled and how they are destroyed. And in total, there are more than 100 proteins involved in both of these processes. And many of the, the proteins are conserved in human beings. And if they are deficient in humans, they can lead to fatal and very uh, debilitating uh, human disorders. So these children are either not born at all, or <clears throat> they might be born, but they live about 10 years of life. So it is directly related to human disease. but. Uh, so the, we identify what the proteins are between yeast and humans, what is common between them, how the mechanisms that we study in yeast can be applied to humans for diagnostic purposes and in the long term for uh, curing the disease, hopefully. So that, that's the general idea of what we do. So I just want another question. How, how it will uh, um, do good to our society? How your research work uh, do good to our society? Yeah. Oh, so, you know, the... the uh, since these processes are common to all of uh, evolution, uh, things that we study in very simple organisms like yeast, which are easy to grow, we can grow liters of these cells, we can uh, break open the cells and study what is inside and get to the mechanistic details. This is very hard to do in humans. So if I were to come to you and say, I want some sample of your liver, just to do an experiment, you would be very, very unhappy to just give, give up a sample of your liver. But we can work with yeast cells and do all of the basic biology in, in yeast cells and then see what is common in human cells. So as I told you, there are at least 25 human diseases in which the inability to assemble a peroxisome or to destroy it can, causes all kinds of diseases. You know, so there are... Uh, uh, in the destruction of peroxisomes, the cells essentially use a process of what is called autophagy or self-eating, where the cells will eat parts of, of themselves that are not necessary. You know, and the, the, the significance of this, and one that you will be able to relate to, is that uh, you know, in the Indian tradition, we fast uh, every once in a while, and starvation activates this process of autophagy and it cleans up your system. So now, you know, we never knew what is the reason for fasting, but now there's a scientific reason that explains what is the significance of fasting. It is, allows the body to clean itself by cells eating parts of the things that are not necessary. So you can imagine proteins and cells or subcellular compartments that have become damaged or, and, and, and no longer functional. They need to be cleared from the system 
and this autophagic process does that. And so the autophagic process that eats a whole mitochondrion or a whole peroxisome or a whole nucleus, you know, these are very important for the cells to survive. And so if you fail to uh, destroy them, then the cell accumulates all kinds of garbage and ultimately it affects all the cellular functions. So these are direct, directly related to human disease and we hope that by identifying these we can uh, either do diagnostic things or ultimately try to cure these diseases. Uh, so that is the relevance of what we do uh, in the lab. But more broadly, the relevance of biotechnology and the, the discussion of this conference is that for a long time we have, for curing human diseases, we have used chemicals, you know, sm small molecules and drugs, uh, pills that we take uh, that are based mostly on natural products. Uh, but these drugs uh, have, uh, you know, been very successful for the pharmaceutical industry. But just in the next, in, in the two years, this year and last year, $100 billion worth of patent, patented drugs are going off the market. The patent is expiring, which then leaves uh, the whole field open for new kinds of things. Some of it would be generics. Others would be biologics, which would be you know, uh, proteins produced by uh, recombinant DNA methodology that will be used to tackle these uh, diseases. And there are many companies now, including some in India, that uh, have been generating biologics. This could be antibodies against particular diseases or proteins like insulin for diabetes and so on, and putting it out into the market. And um, although these drugs are uh, expensive, these now are overtaking the pharmaceutical industry uh, to the point where many pharma are buying out biotech companies or merging with biotech companies or partnering with biotech companies. And you can see the revenues for the pharma companies declining and the revenues for biotech companies increasing. So it, it, this shows that this biotechnology, although it has taken 20, 25 years since its inception, uh, is coming of age and is now becoming a very dominant player in the market. The applications are many, you know, it is for human health and disease, for agriculture, for cleaning the environment, <clears throat> for energy, you know, even for things like computation and medical devices. It's so many, many applications and it also affects things like computer science because there is this informatics, various kinds of informatics. And it is also creating an explosion of new technology in instrumentation. So the things that you know took 10 years uh, to do, today you can do it in a few hours, like DNA sequencing. So it is creating also platforms to really advance the knowledge and speed up uh, the way we do biological experiments to the point where biology, I would predict in the next 50 years, will go from a descriptive science to a predictive science. Uh, so you have been here uh, two days. How, you, how do you feel about Amrita University? But in general, particularly BioQuest, how do you feel about Amrita BioQuest and Amrita University? Yeah, so the, you know, the, uh, what I'm very impressed by is that the Amrita University itself is uh, based on a socially conscious model of, of providing things or doing research with the direct relevance and impact on society. And this is uh, uh, you know, something that is uh, really very dear to Amma's heart, all of the faculty, and most importantly for me, the students uh, have absorbed this to the point where they are going to be the next generation of leaders, and they will, I think, you know, carry the social consciousness into the world to try and provide solutions for all the things that they do. So this is a very important training platform and in the work that is being done here I find that there is a great deal of interdisciplinary work. So we cannot just rely on fields like biology and chemistry and mathematics and even engineering just as their own disciplines. You know, I often say that solutions to real world problems don't come in defined, you know, boxes. Uh, so the engineer has to talk to the biologist and the engineer might have to talk to the do medical doctor. Amrita University has already brought these interdisciplinary teams together uh, to provide solutions. So I think that is the right step and you're training the students in this way. 
And at BioQuest, <clears throat> which is the first meeting of its kind, uh, and it's an international meeting, we, they have selected a wonderful group of people from all over the world who are coming here and talking about uh, the various disciplines of biological sciences and, and the related sciences that <clears throat> really fit into biotechnology and sh are showing how they are impacting the world in the ways I describe for the various diseases. Uh, so it's been a very stimulating meeting and I told the audience uh, a couple of days ago that there's no one, no single individual in this entire meeting who knows all of the fields that are represented. So everyone here, no, even if you're the world's expert on, in topic A, you don't know topics B or C. So we're all learning from each other and it is a very interesting and stimulating environment to do so. So I, I'm predicting that although this is the first meeting, there will be a second and a third and subsequent meetings every few years.